So we're nearing the half year mark since the Galaxy S22 Ultra's release and in this video I'll be giving you my thoughts and experiences with it so far. As someone who regularly rotates between phones, the S22 Ultra quickly became a favorite of mine. It's a true do-it-all phone, and you could argue that this is one of the best all-around options, if not the best all-around option on the market at the moment. I mean, it's a Galaxy Note after all. It checks pretty much every box there is to check. Good battery life, good cameras, good display, good performance, lots of features, but here's the thing. The amount of phones that can check these same boxes has increased significantly over the years. Now can they pull that off to the extent, top to bottom, that this phone can though? Eh, not really. I mean, for one thing, even nearly half a year later, this display still brings a tear to my eye with how good it is. Okay, not a literal tear, you get the point. The display is eye candy, and it's probably the best one out there right now. And not just because of how smooth or how sharp and colorful it is. It's both extremely bright and more power efficient than before with that new LTPO OLED display tech, along with a dynamic refresh rate. The ultrasonic fingerprint reader under that display has been good, almost great even. No real complaints here, it's been fast and accurate, perhaps every once in a while I'll have to tap it again, but nothing major. The phone is built like a tank, it's pretty massive, and it will be a two-hander for most. I'm actually keeping my fingers crossed for a smaller ultra variant down the line, and this is coming from somebody who loves larger phones. But it is solid and weighty, it feels very premium, and the clean cut simple, almost boring look has grown on me a little bit over time, but I do still prefer the look and feel of the S21 Ultra, especially with its rounded corners. The 22 Ultras are kind of sharp, but with a phone this large and a display this good, getting things done is definitely enjoyable. Everything you could do on a phone from watching videos and gaming to legitimate and I mean legit multitasking and getting actual work done is a great experience. The speakers sound really good, the haptic feedback while typing is nice albeit weaker than it's been on previous devices, especially when it comes to phone calls and notifications, maybe even a little too weak at that point. Uh, during heavy use, the phone does get pretty warm and it doesn't help living in a hot place like Texas. Nothing too severe in my experience, but it's definitely worth mentioning. The curved edges on the display can get in the way sometimes. I didn't experience as many accidental inputs as I have on, let's say, the Pixel 6 Pro, so that's good, I guess, but I do still prefer flat displays as much as I love the look of the curved edges. Battery life has been real solid and consistency has leveled out over time, so I've been able to get six and a half hours of screen on time with fairly heavy use, and with moderate use, I could clock in seven plus hours if I needed to. I can make it through a day starting at around 7 a.m. and ending around 10 or 11 p.m. on a single charge if I'm putting it through power user usage, meaning high brightness levels, lots of video and music streaming, lots of camera use, lots of social media and communication, GPS use, stuff like that. And I can get maybe a day and a half on a single charge with the most basic and light use. Everyone's usage and results are different, so take this with a grain or two of salt. All right, so about that S Pen. I don't miss it when I'm using a different phone nearly as much as I used to, but just the fact that it's there, just chilling for whenever I need it or feel like using it is nice. I didn't find myself doing too much note taking. I mainly wanted to test that decreased latency. We're now down to just under three milliseconds from nine milliseconds of latency, making it as close to the real deal as it's ever been. It's perfect for, well, more creative people than me. Now I did use the S Pen every once in a while for a screen off memo for when I needed to jot something down real quick so I wouldn't forget because my brain is small. I used it to create a GIF, edit a photo or video, even to go back to my childhood and color some stuff in pen up if I had some time to kill. And using it as a remote shutter has been pretty cool as it's more than just a neat party trick. Even if you never need it, it's out of sight, out of mind, just in case. Now as for the cameras, I won't spend too much time here, you can get a more in-depth look in our written review, but simply put, this is one of the best camera experiences you'll get on a phone. And it's gotten better over time with updates. Not perfect. While results have gotten more consistent across the board, Samsung still has to improve that shutter delay among other things of course. But no camera system is perfect. This setup is extremely versatile and performs in all kinds of conditions. I actually took this to a Mavs game a few months ago and I got some good shots. These look pretty solid and then you see where I'm sitting and yeah, it's impressive what that zoom lens can pull off.
portrait mode results are quite good. It misses the mark here and there, but that's to be expected. You can record video in 8K. There's pro mode for both pictures and videos. Just a ton of features and settings for these cameras. And as we all know, having a ton of features is quite literally the theme of Samsung phones. This video would be way, way longer if I covered every feature this thing has to offer. If you can think of it, there is probably a feature for it. Theming and customization, making the phone look, feel, and operate the way you want it to has never been easier and more in-depth. And things are about to take another step forward with the next iteration of One UI on the way. Which brings me to what is one of the more important aspects of this phone and its software. Updates. Samsung is promising five years of updates, which includes four major Android updates, and that should get us to Android 16. And so far, they have held true to that promise. This is a big commitment that has left Google in the backseat in this area. Now, I know I said that this is one of my favorite phones at the beginning of the video, but a phone I actually enjoy more is Samsung's own Z Fold 3, and I'm really looking forward to that Fold 4. This probably isn't much of a surprise. The 22 Ultra is clearly more practical and refined, but for me, personally, the 22 Ultra doesn't provide that excitement factor the Fold 3 does, which isn't a bad thing. The S22 Ultra is a fantastic device, and it's going to last a long time with its high-end hardware and positive software update outlook. Like I said, it's the do-it-all phone, and it lives up to its Ultra name by doing everything at a high level. But in a weird way, it's simultaneously a candidate for a phone of the year while being kind of boring. While it's an overall better device than its predecessor, there really shouldn't be any rush to go grab one if you're using a 21 Ultra or any other high-end device released in the last year or so. In most ways, this is just an S21 Ultra and a Note 20 Ultra in a blender. All in all, it's an easy recommendation because of the sheer amount it has to offer. Now, it's a tough pill to swallow because of that starting price of $1,200. But that's exactly the point. That's hefty for any phone, but if a phone were to cost over a thousand bucks, it should be a phone packed with as much as this one has. But yeah, don't grab this at $1,200 because you can trade in a device to knock that price down and Samsung might even toss in a free Galaxy watch to go along with it. You'll often find deals where you can grab one for $1,000 or less. Uh, it was actually just about $840 for Amazon Prime Day and that's not the last time you'll see that price tag. You could even go the used route and find it for less than that. I actually like the direction Samsung is going in with its phones, finding a new lane for its S line, basically adding in all of the Galaxy Note elements, while also focusing on making foldables more and more accessible, practical, and mainstream. So what do you think of the S22 Ultra? Do you have one or are you thinking about picking one up? Let's talk about it in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to drop a like as it'll help us out a lot. Drop a sub if you're new. It's been Zach. I'll talk to you later and thanks for watching.